Well, a warm welcome to the A Trip to the Moon podcast. My name is Matt Jones. And uh, well, today we're taking a dive into Tranmere Rovers women because uh, they've had an exciting season, one that has uh, resulted in them lifting some silverware not too long ago after a terrific penalty shootout victory over Stockport County in the uh, County Cup final. And uh, the person who has been in charge at the helm uh, throughout the season uh, joins me on the podcast now. It's a very warm welcome to Sam Irvine. Great to have you on, Sam. Hi Matt, um, thanks for having us on. It's a, it's a pleasure to to come on and and get to talk to you. Well, thank you for joining me. And uh, well, it's been your first season in charge of Tranmere Rovers women. Just kind of uh, before we get into all the nitty gritty and stuff, just kind of sum up how it's gone really and where the club are. Yeah, so um, obviously big ending with the cup final there, the cup final victory um, came in in the summer. After the the team had a uh, a good season last year, um, myself and Craig come across from Bury where we had a good season ourselves. Um, we started the league okay, um, and then around about the Christmas time, we felt like we needed to to make some changes to the squad um, and maybe take the take the team in a in a direction that we were more comfortable with. Um, and so there were some players that went out and some that come in um, and quite a few that stepped up from the development team. Um, we've got a great pathway at the club for young players. Um, obviously proven that with the way that they've performed in the second half of the season. Um, and then the second half of the season with uh, mostly those young players um, coming together, we've, we've performed OK in the last um, sort of nine games. I think we've won... Um, eight of those, obviously, and one of those being the being the cup final. So, uh, not a bad end to the season. Absolutely not a bad end to the season. So you beat uh, Stockport County ladies six five on penalties after a one one draw over the ninety minutes in the cup final, having uh, already beaten the likes Macclesfield to get this far. With that, oh, sorry, Macclesfield definitely um, to get this far. And at Wirral Phoenix women as well. How great is it just to finish with a bit of silverware? Yeah, it's uh, it's everything you work for in it um, across a a long season. Um, they're a, they're a big slog, and there's lots of lots of different things to deal with over the course of a season. So to end it in silverware is obviously um, is always uh, delighting for everybody involved. Um, I think you see, you know, the way we celebrated it. After the game on Sunday, um, the 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 team was absolutely overjoyed. Obviously, the team both on and off the pitch uh, come together. Um, you know, it was a really tough game against Stockport. They're a league above us, and they've had a they've had a great season themselves. I think they finished third in the in the league above us. Um, so they've had a really really successful season. Um, I think it's fair to say that they were the favourites on the day. Um, and I think it's probably fair to say that, that they played like that as well. I think they um, probably just shaded the game, uh, if, if we're being fair. Um, but, you know, they, they never took the chances. And um, we knew that if we could get one, just one, um, we'd put it away. And uh, Young Izzy nodded one in in the 92nd minute to take it to penalties. And then um, the rest was history. Um, penalty shootout went on. For a lot longer than any of us uh, wanted it to. I've just watched it back for the first time today because I didn't watch it live. Um, it was it was too much for for the for the older uh, ticker. So, um, but no, it's uh, obviously a great achievement by such a young team to to go and pick up sil silverware so early in their careers. Absolutely, and to get it the way you did with that late equaliser and then winning on penalties. Penalties must be a horrendous way to lose, but when you win uh, in that manner, it must be absolutely fantastic. You, you say the the season is a, a long slog, and it is. Obviously, you started right back on the 21st of August, I think I'm right in saying, with a 1-0 a win over Darwin, uh, finish on the 30th of April. But there are long spells, aren't there, kind of without games in the, in the women's uh, calendar because it hasn't really quite progressed in terms of the number of teams in each league that it needs to, to to have the amount of games required, really. So how how do you manage that going? Say maybe you might play a game one week and then might have two or three weeks off before your next one. Yeah, there can be. You're right there. It's um, 
as you say, there, there has been periods over the over the season where we've maybe had uh, two weeks without a game and things like that. Um, I think Wigan dropped out of our league this year, so obviously that was a team down to begin with, um, and that lessened the the amount of teams in the league. So, um, but yeah, you're right. Um, the, the the women's game at our level is um, still developing. Uh, obviously. Um, coming more to the fore over the last couple of years, uh, as everyone knows. Um, I feel personally, um, you know, there's a lot of investment and a lot of um, support gone in at the very, very top level of the game, for the women's game, um, and the same for the for the grassroots at the very uh, start of women's football. But um, I think the middle bit where we find ourselves at the minute is probably the bit um, that needs a bit of attention and a bit of focus on now because that's the bit I, I feel needs to probably catch up with the with the two ends, if you like. Yeah, I've said this on this podcast before, but I, I commentate on Burnley women on their home games and they play in the in the third tier. And they had a period this year where they didn't have a home league game between the end of February uh, and the end of October, so a four four five month period, and it's 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 kind of. Um, it's not really sustainable that if you want to grow the game because you need to get people into the habit of coming down every uh, couple of weeks. It's, uh, your, your opinion and, and yours will be much more formed and informed than mine. Uh, it seems to be similar to mine in that the top end of the game has grown quicker than the, the rest of the game can really ca- keep up with it at the moment. Yeah, it is. It, it is stuck in a rock between a hard place. Um, you know, there's a lot of teams at our level that are, um, you know, for instance, uh, ourselves would probably like to to professionalise um, further, and and there's quite a few teams that would like to, and then you've still got teams at at, at this level that are still okay with with being um, a grassroots club, if you like, um, and that's no criticism. That that's obviously fair for everybody, and obviously finances dictate a lot of that also. Um, but yeah, definitely this this sort of middle bit of the game is, is certainly um, needs to catch up, needs more work on over over the next couple of years. Um, again, a lot of people are doing work voluntary as well, um, so that obviously has to t- be taken into consideration. But you know, there's there is weeks where, as you say, you've not got games or you've not got home games, or um, and then when you look. Um, there's two teams that have got a free week that possibly could have even played each other, um, had somebody organised it and, and stuff like that. But again, as I say, there's a lot of lot of volunteers that put a lot of time and effort in um, at this level. And so obviously, you know, um, the business side of it at, at this level of the, uh, of the game probably still got a way to go in terms of catching up. You say volunteers. Uh, uh, the game I was doing on s- Sunday was Liverpool Feds were away at Burnley and Liverpool Feds, one of their players, uh, missed the game because she's a police officer and she couldn't get the time off work. So that kind of uh, shows the, um, what, what I guess you're having to deal with um, as managers all the time as well. But let's go back to, to this season and some of the, the real highs of it. Talked about the cup win. What about the game at Prenton Park? Oh, yeah. Fantastic occasion. Um I think nearly 800 fans turned out on the day. Um, so that was fantastic experience for obviously everybody involved. Um, the cup final on Sunday was similar. Uh, I believe there was around uh, an 800 uh, figure in attendance for that as well. So we played in, in front of some decent crowds. Um, again, as I've just spoken to you there about the our sort of side of the game catching up, um, it's really important for us to to show that as well, that we can put fans in into the stadium and um, we can get people turning out to watch us because that obviously um, proves to the people uh, and the powers uh, that obviously have the finances to to, to back us more. Um, and so um, it was good that we got that amount of fans out on the day and obviously um, a good win on the day as well, a good performance um, and a great experience all around, hopefully. Um, there'll be more opportunities to do things like that again in the future. Absolutely. It shows the supports there, doesn't it? And I think that's the most heartening thing, that if, if you can start building those blocks then, then the, the, the world's your oyster. There are big strides forward that can be made. Yeah, precisely. Much like the much like the top of the game with the Lionesses, you know, they've proven that they can fill out 90,000-seat stadiums and, and win things and 
and of course that attracts sponsorship and finances and uh, and all the rest of it um and and it's similar with us you know if we if we can continue to put um you know a decent figure in attendance behind the team and and that type of thing and try and keep professionalizing more then obviously um you hope that the game continues to catch up it's one thing that um i've focused on since i came in in the summer obviously the team before i came came in was a was a team with a with a coach uh with a manager um and i'd like to think we've we've really focused in on on trying to professionalize everything that we do you know um we've got a a good backroom team now of of uh really talented people coaches sports scientists and people looking at all that sort of stuff for us um we've bridged the gap obviously with the with the development team and the under 16s as well and i think everybody feels together and and as if they're contributing to the uh, to the club and that's obviously something that we were uh, very big on when we came in the summer so uh, i'm glad to see that um the feedback's good on that um and hopefully we can continue building on that also and you've got your super fan Evelyn as well, who's uh, who's there. I think every week, isn't she? And she's uh, she's someone who who loves it, which is fantastic to see because that's the kind of young fan that you need to attract to to keep going forward. You mentioned the lionesses there. Have you noticed a surge in interest and maybe in participation since what happened last summer? Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, undoubted. I think um, you know there's been a big interest in in the game in in general um you know more people are watching it more people are going to games you know i think obviously um i think on monday there arsenal played against uh, wolfsburg in the champions league and filled out the emirates in the same fixture 10 years ago there was only 1400 at the same fixture so it, it shows you that obviously the game's going in in, in the right in the right direction so yeah it, it's undoubtedly there and it's it's um still growing um, it's not finished yet. It's it's just started. If anything, I think it's on all of us that that work in women's football. You know, managers, coaches, and support staff, everybody, to keep on pushing it as as much as we all can, um, and continue to you know continue to big it up and and get what we can out of it. And there've been some interesting developments throughout uh, the year since the Lionesses. Uh, some interesting developments in, um, developments in terms of promotion and relegation recently as well. With <clears> the championships going to have two teams going down instead of one soon, which shows that kind of there's there's more room for progression through the leagues for teams. Could you just uh, explain to listeners who maybe aren't aware exactly where Tranmere Rovers women are in the pyramid? So we're in tier five. Um... So step five, if you like. So a um, couple of promotions off the of WSL, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, as you said there, some changes into the into the structuring in terms of getting into the championship, I think, which were um, sorely needed. Um, you know, see Wolves obviously won the Northern Premier League last year and, and got beaten the playoff by Southampton and therefore couldn't go up. I think if you win your league, you should always go up. And so it's nice to see that that'll come into place next year. Um, but similarly, where we're at, only the champions go up. So, you know, you've got a, you're going to have to have a very, very excellent season to uh, to keep progressing up the leagues. Um, hopefully, I think, um, uh, as I said before, if the game keeps progressing, um, clubs like ourselves that have got that, a uh, good backing and good platform to build on. Uh, we'll be given more opportunities to to continue moving up the league because, of course, that's that is what we want to do. Um, you know, I think it also makes it uh, more exciting if you've more more chances of promotion and relegation and that type of thing as well. Makes it more marketable also. Um, so hopefully, um, those things will, will will continue happening over the next couple of years. Yeah, I completely agree with you because you kind of want. You want to be going down to the last weeks of the season with something riding on what's happening, really, don't you? And um, I'm looking at the table now without knowing yeah. what their final results were exactly. But FC United and Manchester finishing uh, eight points clear of Salford City FC in first place. And then you've got Mossley Hill Athletic, who finished bottom by five points from Darwin. And they were a long way adrift of, of Blackburn Community 
sports club. So if you've only got one going up and going down, it can it can almost create a bottleneck at the top of the division and stifle progression a little bit, really, because you've got players who are probably good enough and teams who are probably good enough to go and compete in the next level, but they aren't able to do so because of how the pyramid is structured. So I'm sure changes will be welcome. And, th- and that's where it, and it comes back to what we were saying right at the start of this conversation, really, when you've only got 12 teams per league, it makes it quite difficult for you to have a big number of elite teams and therefore a big number of elite players, really. Yeah, I totally agree. Like we said before, it's, um, you know, in our league, there's some there's some teams that, that want to um, obviously become more professional and get that opportunity to, to keep um, going up the leagues. Um, but, you know, there's a lot behind it. It's, it's not just as simple as that sometimes, you know. I know Huddersfield a few years ago um, won their league and couldn't go up because you know finances dictated that they couldn't. So um, there's there's still stuff like that. But yeah, hopefully, as you say, over the next couple of years we can. Um, uh, it puts more excitement into the leagues as well, doesn't it? Um, as you say, it is FC United have won the league this year. Um, you know they looked uh, set to win that pretty early on, to be honest. Uh, coming out of the National League from last year. Um, if you had a, a promotion system below that um, for maybe the next four teams even, um, it would keep the league interesting and keep it going right until the very end. So, you know, ideas, good ideas, put them forward um, and hopefully uh, somebody listens to them. And then I guess as well, the, the, the upshot of that is if you've got more teams in each division, uh, it means you can have more games and players are going to be playing more regularly and fans are going to get more into the habit of going to watch games. It's a it's a circle that can, uh, I'm sure, be circled off. Um, but anyway, we've we've taken enough of your time. Before we do finish, you finished sixth in the uh, in the table this season, um, which is a, a very healthy finish for you. Obviously won a county cup as well. This has just been your first year in charge. How excited are you going into next year, which I'm sure seems a very long way off at the moment, given it's only early May, but excited that there can be more progression next year? Yeah, definitely so. Um, building on that County Cup win uh, with a younger, with a group of young players, um, as you say, a, a fairly healthy finish in the league. Um, that's something we'd probably look to put uh, right next year. I think we... I think we're better than what our, we've shown in the league, um, so we would look to improve there. But we know we know where we need to improve, um, and as you say, can't wait for next season. Uh, planning's already started, pre-season fixtures and all the rest of it. Um, if we can add one or two experienced players to help uh, the young group out, I think we'll be in a good place. Um, and if we can hit the ground running, hopefully we can have another uh, successful season and, and compete for that top spot. And is there scope for a lot of kind of improvement at Tranmere? We, we know that they were once upon a time back in the, uh, the the top flight a few years ago when the likes of uh, Sue Smith were playing their trade for the club. Is there a high ceiling for Rovers? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, you, you should uh, always want to improve. Um, you know, we've won a cup. Um, that's that's not the end of it. That's uh, as I said to you before. That's the start of it. Um, I'm not one for standing still. Uh, I'm not one for being a tick in a box either. Um, so it's important that we uh, keep hammering the door um, and keep trying to get uh, as much support as we can uh, and keep trying to improve everything we do. I think we've shown that with with obviously the the stuff we've done off the field this year. Hopefully, as I say, if we can add one or two that can help the group out for next season, that'll transfer itself onto the pitch also. Um, and, you know, the aim going into any season is obviously to to compete for that top spot. So we'll be looking to do that next year. Absolutely. And fingers crossed that can happen. I'm sure we'll catch up uh, towards the start of next season as well, uh, ahead of what will hopefully be another exciting campaign, but uh, an exciting one already in your first year in charge with that trophy win as well over Stockport. So great to relive that with you, Sam. Uh, congratulations on your, your first year uh, with the club. Hopefully next year can be even more successful as well. And, uh, and thank you very much for your time on the Trip to the Moon podcast today. Thanks a lot for having me on, mate. Cheers.